All right. Hi, everybody. It's Jeff here again with your assignment for sample video. So we'll first take a look at the part one tree visualizer, and then we'll take a look at the game in part two. So let me load up this visualizer here. And OK, so once you have finished your tree and your tree node classes, you can actually compile them with this tree visualization tool, and that should help to help you to debug things, just to make sure that your tree is being created properly, the structure is as it should be, and that it's working as expected. Okay, so hopefully this will help you to debug things. So let's try first adding some words. I'll add the word Alice. You'll notice that the Add Radio button is selected, and I'll click Add. All right, that looks good. Let's try adding Albert. And that looks good as well. Now you'll notice, because it's a tree, um, because Albert and Alice both share the prefix Al, then we don't duplicate this prefix, we just have the prefix Al, and then L has two children, I and B. Okay, so that's that looks good. Now you'll also notice that as I'm adding words, this words in tree field down here is being updated. What this is actually doing is calling the uh, ascending string iterator method in your tree class, which in turn then of course calls the pre-order iterator method in your tree node class. Okay, so what is being displayed here is exactly what your iterator is returning. So you need to make sure that that is uh, printing out the words in the correct order. And it, of course in this case it should be in ascending order. If we uncheck this, then it's going to call your descending string iterator method in the tree class, which in turn calls the, uh, what was it, reverse pre-order iterator method in the tree node class. Okay, so once again, uh, you need to make sure that the results down here are correct because that's exactly what your iterator is returning. Okay, and of course your size and is empty uh, are tested right here, so you should make sure that those are correct as well. All right, try adding a few more words here, Bob. Yeah, sometimes it goes a little wonky like this for some reason, um, but if you add a few more words, it, it goes back to normal. So I'll add Bob and Brian, and once again, Bob and Brian share the prefix B, so this first B has two children, O and R. Now, let's try adding a word that's already in the tree. I'll try adding Brian again, and I get an exception. So what it's displaying here is the error message that you, you passed into that exception object that you created, the string exists exception and it also gives you the stack trace in case you need to debug it at all um, you can see the stack trace so you can identify any lines that you might want to look at to uh, to fix potential problems so we tried adding a bunch of words successfully we tried adding duplicate words um, I should not be able to add a prefix of an existing word either so we have Bob in our tree if I try adding Bo string already exists as a prefix in the tree okay so you need to make sure of that all right, now let's try removing a word. I'll remove Brian. And of course, because Brian and Bob both share the prefix B, we, we have to remove Brian, but we can't remove this particular B because otherwise then Bob would be removed. So we need to make sure of that. And it looks like it worked out well. We still have Bob in our tree, but Brian has been removed, and we can confirm that in our words in tree iterator here. All right, let's try removing a word that's not in our tree. So again, I'll try removing Brian. And we get another exception. The string does not exist in the tree, okay? And the stack trace as well. So now let's go and check some strings. I can check whether a word exists in my tree or whether a prefix exists in the tree. So I'll start with words. And I'm going to look, uh, is Alice in the tree? The tree does contain the word Alice, so that's good. Uh, now let's try Brian. Brian is not in our tree, so this should be false. And the tree does not contain the word Brian. That's good as well. Now, we also want to check prefixes. Um, if I type in Al, and I ask, is the word Al in my tree? It should say that it's not, because Al is a prefix in my tree, but it's not a full word. So now let's check if Al exists as a prefix. And of course it does. Okay, A and L right here. Now let's try Alice as a prefix. And it tells me that it does contain it. Why is that? Well, a word is a prefix of itself, so that's that makes sense. It should return true for that. 
Now let's try a prefix that doesn't exist in the list. I'll try br, or in the tree I should say. And the tree does not contain br. So once again we're good there. One other thing I want to show you is that if a particular node, if you want to inspect it, what you can do is actually hover your mouse over it. And what I've done is I'm using the Reflection API. And what it does is essentially goes and looks at your tree node, whichever one you're hovering over. And it looks at all of the variables, all the instance variables that you declared within that tree node object, even private ones. It gets a list of their names and it gets their values and then it prints them out here in this little tooltip. Okay, so this should help you to make sure that all your variables are initialized as they should be. But it's kind of a pain to have to go and hover over all of these, so what you can actually do is go down here and click on Show Detail. And now that draws the entire tree with extra detail added in. So we have at the root, we have the character is set to null because the root is always an empty node. And it has no data, it has no parent and it has two children A and B and of course therefore its child count is two. Now going down the A side of the A branch uh, we have character A once again it stores no data. Its parent is the empty node so that's why that, that's, that's empty there and it has one child L. Okay so moving down L character is L, data is null so You'll notice here, th this is actually important, as we go down the tree, all of our nodes have their data instance variable set to null with the exception of the leaf nodes. Okay, so once I get to the end of Alice, the leaf node at E has data set to 36. All other nodes in the word Alice have their data pointers set to null. Okay, that's an important thing. We only store data at the leaf nodes. Same with Albert. We're storing data 7 in T, in the node T in Albert, the last letter in that word, but every other data pointer is set to null going up in the tree. Now, you might be wondering, well, where is this data 7 and data 36 coming from? Well, what I've actually done in the tree visualization tool is I'm taking your, your tree class that you've compiled in with my code, and I'm actually creating a tree storing integers at the, at the leaf nodes. Okay, and then every time you add a word, it chooses a random integer between 0 and 99 and adds it with that word. So whatever number it chose gets placed in the leaf node. Alright, so yeah, just make sure that those data pointers are all null except for at the leaves. One other thing that I should mention actually is um, you need to make sure that your clear method works properly as well and you can test that with the clear button down here. So I'm actually going to turn off show detail again and if you find that your, your tree disappears it's just off the screen. Just zoom out a little bit and you'll be able to drag it back down. Okay so we want to make sure that clear works properly so I'm going to clear my tree and it should be reinitialized with an empty root node. Okay, A tree always has an empty root node even if it's an empty tree. Okay, and of course size is zero and is empty is yes now. Alright, so just make sure that all of those particular elements are, are working correctly.